Hello out there YouTubers. This fun uh, this video is going to serve two different functions. The first one it's going to be a public uh, announcement message and the second purpose is it's going to talk about the grammar and a very specific uh, mechanic of the grammar. Correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar. Now first the public announcement. As I have said, ad nauseum, I have been teaching this grammar, correct sentence structure, in the public since February of 2018. I have invested thousands of hours in creating the YouTube channel that you have before you that's open to the public, free to the public, anyone who wants to come in. I've invested the effort and the work, the blood, sweat, and tears in creating these uh, hopefully simplified bite-sized videos so that the average layperson can learn correct sentence structure and it's up to the viewer to invest the hours of study if they so choose okay in other words I'm like well over I'm like between 11 and 12 thousand hours if I had to throw an estimate out there because I know some people like to throw estimates out there about how long they've been doing things that's cool it doesn't matter to me what matters to me is performance if you look under these videos in the descriptions the text of the videos you will see correct sentence structure you will also see a progression of the quality of correct sentence structure from the earliest videos until the videos that I publish now this is the demonstration of a performance okay my correct sentence structure performance available to the public now I'm beginning to have people come and they will challenge me on something and they will try to say that Jason you're wrong in this this doesn't make sense to me because this is the way I do it and then I will say, okay, show me why you do it that way. And invariably, they will say, because David did it this way, or Russell does it this way. And then I say, well, that's not closure for me. I mean, that's fine that they do it that way, but why do they do it that way? Why do you do it that way? And they can't answer that question. Then they go on to talking about other things that have nothing to do with the question I'm asking. My closure is here on this YouTube channel. These questions that people ask shows me that they have not viewed the material on the YouTube channel that I provide here for free. Here's the thing. I now understand perhaps what it must feel like to be someone who's been in this for a very long time and have people come out and start challenging what you say and looking for closure. The difference between me and them is that my closure is here on this YouTube channel. Study it if you have a question about anything I do. Study it, find some examples, send them to me. This is the bottom line. If it's that important to you, this is the way I feel. If it's that important to you, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. We can set up a face-to-face -face video consultation. 10, 15 minutes, we can clear this up. No problem. However, I will find that people will do anything not to do that. Why it is, I don't know. I can only guess that it's because it, it levels the geometric plane of uh, communication and for some reason they don't want to do that they'd rather just go back and forth in emails ad nauseum they'd rather mitigate in comment sections I don't do that I don't like to do that I try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt but if it keeps going on and they keep saying the same damn thing over and over again well I just stop communicating with them because what's the point I give them my closure I have my closure I actually had one person tell me I believe I've given you all the closure you need. 
as if they know what the closure is that I need, which is a huge assumption, which shows me that they do not have closure on the grammar, on the psychology of the grammar and how it works. For example, it's not up to me to tell you what you need for closure. It's contingent upon me to give you closure if you ask for it. And to do the best of my do that to the best of my ability. I have done this, you know, since February of 2018. I have learned many different teaching methods. Very blessed to have talked to and taught many, many, many men and women over the face of this earth. Many different teaching methods. Again, in order to teach someone, they have to be open to learn. That's a big issue too. I've run into a couple people who are not here to learn. They're here to argue. Henceforth, the people that I'm referring to here that just would prefer to mitigate rather than do a video consultation to meet on a geometric level playing field. Because here I am, I have a construct. I'm a grammar tutor. These are my public claims. If anyone wants to board my vessel, they must agree to my terms and conditions. They don't get to say what goes. That's the way it is. My YouTube channel's out here for those who wish to learn. If you wish to be peaceful and neutral with the balance of the honor and the grace and the maintenance of the rule one, rule equal, then you will follow my terms and conditions in order to establish that geometric level playing field of contract, communication. If you choose not to and you choose to ignore what I'm saying, well then that tells me you're not serious about the geometric level playing field of contract. You're not serious about rule one, rule equal. You don't want closure. You just want to argue maybe or find some way to, I don't know, maybe it's a malicious intent, I have no idea. I'm not gonna assume things like that, I can only guess. But this is my public announcement. If you are serious about your grammar question or grammar issue that you may have, I offer you the venue of closure, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, email me. I will set up a video consultation, confidential, very brief, 10 to 15 minutes probably, and we can take care of it there, eye to eye. What could be simpler than that? What do they call those people that only want to type in and, and, and exchange comments or emails or whatever? They call them keyboard warriors, I think. I run into a few of those every now and then. Some of them are very good at hiding it, but it does happen. So the difference between me and those, uh, those other people that I mentioned is that my closure is here on this YouTube channel. It's already out there. It's available to the public. You can go right to it and look at it. Warts and all. It's all here. So, okay. So the second thing I'm going to talk about is, and this is an issue that has come up where the styles of syntaxing, where someone will say, well, why doesn't an adverb modify another adverb? Why wouldn't you have a 1-1 one, one scenario? A 1-1-2, one, one, a 1-1-3-4? One, one, Simply because, first you have to know what an adverb is. Again, I have given closure to this on my YouTube channel. If you look in the syntax playlist, you will find it. There are two videos. I believe it's closure and clarity on two specific syntax scenarios, something like that. Those are the videos where I give closure to the parts of speech and how they modify one another and the syntax scenarios. I have a very specific video about the five syntax scenarios. If you think about it, the adverb is what? It's a no verb. In the fiction, a verb will not exist unless an adverb precedes it and modifies it. A verb can be tangible or non-tangible. The difference between a verb and an adverb, a no verb, is that the adverb is always non-tangible, non-fact based. What does that mean? Again, I have a video on that. I have two very specific videos on that. Matter of fact, I have probably at least half a dozen videos on tangible and non-tangible contract words and, and how to tell which is which. All right? So the adverbs are always going to be non-tangible, non-fact based. The adjective is going to be fact based, tangible contract. You notice the number value difference. An adjective is three. The adverb is one. The adverb is the weakest in the numerical value. It's a one. 
there's only one. And then the adjective has a numerical value of three. It's much stronger. That is why an adjective can color another adjective, can color another adjective until you get to the end of a run of a succession of tangible contract words, and that final word will be a pronoun. Now the thing is, the final word that is a pronoun can either be a tangible or a non-tangible contract word because, again, you have to know what a pronoun is. And I give closure to that in the same two videos that I just mentioned, and other videos as well, about what a pronoun is, what an adjective is, what a verb is, what an adverb is, what a conjunction is, what a positional is, a lodial, a fact. Everything is given closure to in these videos. Please, feel free to take the time to study it. Whoa. Please take the time to study them before you decide to start trolling me or mitigating with me in a comment section or with emails. I'm not sure if this video is going to be usable, but at least it was fun making it. And by the way, my neighbor's shed just fell over. Right there.